Republican strategist Tony Sayeg. He was the former press aide to the GOP vice presidential nominee Jack Kemp in 1996. So you were right on time with your expertise and experience. <laughs> Always good to see you, my friend Tony. Uh, what are your thoughts this morning on this choice? Look, I think Donald Trump actually demonstrated two important things. Number one, he understands he needs to unify the Republican Party and the conservative movement. Mike Pence really reflects the three most essential elements of the modern conservative movement. He's a traditional conservative. He's very closely aligned with those on the Hill, like Paul Ryan, who calls him a personal friend. He supported Ted Cruz. This is one of the congressmen who was on the forefronts of supporting the Tea Party. So he understands the grassroots movement of the conservative party, which is essential, by the way, for Trump to gain victory in November. And really, the final piece of this whole thing is, as an evangelical, he understands and speaks a language that Donald Trump, admittedly, just doesn't necessarily uh, understand or speak. So it helps him with a very key constituency that, again, is going to be an integral part of any sort of roadmap to victory. So you add on top of that, by the way, the fact that he's a governor of mm -hmm. a fairly important state, um, one that Donald Trump won decisively. Uh, he also was a congressman for six terms, sat mm -hmm. on the Foreign Relations Committee. We understand today, I know we're going to be talking about it, how important terrorism and other national security matters are. And he also was at one point the number three ahead of the Republican conference in the House, part of that leadership that really pushed a lot of pro-growth, tax cut, free market type of ideas that a lot of Republicans are hoping will define the Trump message. Hey, Tony, it's Sandra. Uh, Pence's foreign policy as congressman has been described as some as Reagan-esque. Uh, what do you think, particularly in the, in the wake of this uh, horrific attack in Nice, what do you think Trump and Pence himself will highlight as his strengths on foreign policy as he is on the ticket? Yeah, no doubt, Sandra, foreign policy is going to emerge and, and remain a, a major issue. We see in polling right behind jobs in the economy, fighting terrorism is <laughs> is the number two concern. Uh, Pence served on a committee where he saw amazing amounts of information, uh, top secret intelligence, and like Reagan, he has clarity of vision, and you see it in the nominee, Donald Trump, where it is a bipolar fight sometimes. It is a civil yeah. civilizational struggle, which clarifies our approach, and I think that's what you're going to see from a, a Trump-Pence ticket, contrary to Clinton, where you already see her nuancing what happened in Nice, part of this kind of slow and steady uh, approach to fighting global terror that you've seen from the Obama administration that doesn't work. And Reagan called the communists, he called the Soviets the evil empire. He went out there, he defined the enemy, and he was able, therefore, to beat it. This is the kind of approach I think you're going to see from mm -hmm. a Trump-Pence ticket. Hey, Tony, it's Charlie Gasparino. Hey, Charlie. Um, do you think he has the gravitas or... I should say the toughness to do what Newt Gingrich would have done, and that's essentially keep Donald in line. I mean, part of this going forward will be telling Donald where he steps over the line, which he actually does a lot, sitting him down in a room and saying, don't go there. Does he have that ability? And that, that was, listen, he's the establishment choice. We know that the Trump people inside wanted, like the, the, the adults in the room, the Paul Manafort, even his kids liked, liked uh, Mike Pence. Uh, the gut was to pick Newt Gingrich or Chris Christie, so he went with the with the smart move, I think, politically. But does Pence actually can Pence do what Newt would have been would have done and said, "Stop it, Donald! You're making this you're making a mess out of this." Well, r real quick, I, I will say, I mean, consider that Ted Cruz supports Mike Pence. The ACU just released a statement. The American Conservative Union. That's not my pra question, though. Praising. Yeah. So I'm saying he's not part of the establishment necessarily. I, I, I think he kind of triangulates fairly well. But you know, it's funny, Charlie, because when I saw this pick happen, it really did make me realize something, and, and you're referencing the political art article that basically said Trump liked Christie, he might have liked Newt, but everybody wanted him to choose Pence. Trump takes advice. I mean, there's been this open question that will Trump listen to smart, intelligent counsel, or will he just do everything based on his own instinct and kind of personal preference? So to, to your point, I think this is a very important early indicator of the type of very strong, good judgment Trump as a candidate has become able to make, has learned how to make, and I think Pence maybe not being his personal first choice does reflect the fact that he is understanding that as a candidate, he can't just always do what he personally wants to do. There is a, a, a larger consideration, and today I think he took a lot of very good counsel into uh, account by choosing Pence. Hi, my friend. It's Julie. Uh, quick question for you. Julie. So, hi. So, Pence's numbers are pretty bad in Indiana. He's less popular than I think 33 other governors right now. And so my question for you is part of the reason for his unpopularity is because of his record with women. Trump has a problem with women, obviously, according to polling. Do you think Pence being on the ticket with Trump was a missed opportunity for Trump to get women to reconsider his candidacy? 
No, I've, I've said all along, I, you know, kind of identity politics never works for Republicans. It really didn't even work in 2008 with the selection of Sarah Palin. In fact, if anything, Palin helped with conservatives. So where I think you really see in the Republican realm, at least, a good vice presidential pick come in is someone who brings party alignment, rounds it out. Mm -hmm. Because Trump already is considered to be fairly nonpartisan. Uh, you know, he didn't attack Planned Parenthood, for example, as, as uh, strongly as many other conservatives did. But look, Mike Pence Pence is a pro-life governor. Most national Republicans are pro-life, so I don't think it necessarily hurts him. And as far as the religious liberty debate, you know, I do think you have, again, this kind of open question in, in our extended party uh, of how to approach it. You can be for the protection uh, of, of separation of church and state, while at the same time making certain policy clarifications that as a governor, you have to be able to make. You don't just get to talk about issues, you have to help laws pass. So I think in that respect, Pence can talk about his government mental experience, which I think is going to be a, a strong suit for Trump. Yeah, well, one of the first things that they will no doubt have to react to is what's happening in France. So it'll be interesting to see as a team uh, as they move into that topic. <coughs> Tony, always great to see you. Thank you, my friend, for Thanks, joining Harris. us.